this tutorial, we're going to be performing a, a, a cast that poses a few problems, and we're going to find solutions for that. It's the 45 degree double spay. Okay, now, when we create an anchor across the stream, look at our rod there and the anchor line across it. It creates the letter T, and that's the ideal situation for our anchor lying across the stream. If it's a double spay like that, there's the T-shape. We pull against it and we make our forward delivery. So we're looking for that T-shape between the rod and the anchor. If we want to cast 45 degrees downstream and the line's on the dangle and we use a normal double spay pickup, look, the line isn't making the letter T. It's making a sort of Z shape. Let me show you again. There. It's not the letter T. So how are we gonna get that letter T, which effectively is lying across the stream like that? How are we going to do that? Well, we can ignore that principle and just try and get away with it, which is one way of doing it, okay? So we can just leave the anchor downstream, come round, make a shallow D-loop. You see that the contact point is here, the anchor's in front of me, which means that my D-loop's not gonna be very big. And if we know that the D-loop is the sail, we want our D-loop that big, like a giant sail, don't we? Like that, because that loads the rod. If we only have a D-loop that big, it doesn't load the rod as well. So the problem with trying to create a double spay across the stream with a normal pickup and leaving the anchor down there is that when we come round, look how small the D-loop is. It's very small. And actually turning this sort of weird, very sort of acute angle creates a bit of a line whip. So we can't add energy into it because it'll pull it out. Let me show you. You see that? So let's have a look at it again, the traditional way to do a 45 degree spade. Slowly come round, small D-loop, and it goes across. It goes across, but it sort of dribbles out, doesn't it? All right, well, what about another solution? We know the line follows the path the rod tip takes. So, we need to get the rod tip there and we need the tip of the fly line there as well. So we can then make this move and try and cheat the angle so that we get the letter T pointing 45 degrees across the stream and then make the cast. So how are we gonna do that? Well, you can lift up into a roll cast, break a rule which is cross the tracks. Oh, and just get away with it. So now I've put the line down into the bank. Now I can lift up and I've got more of a letter T. But not much, a bit of a bigger D loop. It's a little bit better, but still not there. And there's a problem with that. If I'm tight up to the bank, I can't make a roll cast into the bank because I'll be on the bank. Anyway, if I have got space, I can make a roll cast into the bank like that. I have got a letter T now, but it's not a big D-loop. But we're getting there. It's got a bit more energy. Now, the way I invented to get away with both these issues is to do a little wiggle movement on the lift. Let me show you what that is. It's actually very hard to get right. I will say that. There are some benefits and some disadvantages, and there's equal benefits and there's equal disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is, as I say, it's very hard to get right. Here I am st standing 45 degree across the stream. I'm gonna lift as normal, but then I'm just gonna wiggle the rod in and out on the lift, just as the line breaks free of the water surface. Let me show you, just a little lift. Oh, look at that. I've got a letter T. And the anchor's much closer to me, which means I can get a nice big D-loop. Nice. And it is. 
but it's very hard. If you draw the squiggle too big, the line actually hits you. So getting the wiggle, so the line is really close to you, you've got that T, got a big D loop. Oh yeah, now. There's a disadvantage. It's called centripetal force. Let's have a look at creating a normal anchor. There's the line. Now look at the rod tip. The rod tip is between me and the anchor lying on the water. And the spiral staircase pulls that line straight. In fact, the spiral staircase is pulling against the anchor on the water. It's called centripetal force. It's pulling, here's the anchor on the water, and it's pulling inside it and against it, which is creating tension and rod load. Here's how it should look. The rod tip is between me and the anchor beyond the rod tip. And when I pull against it, it's pulling against that line that's stuck on the water. What happens if the tip of the rod goes beyond the anchor on the water. Let's have a look at it. There. I've got that loop of line. Now I'm pulling. I'm not pulling against any of the anchor. And it creates that little diminishing loop which creates big problems for us. That's not pulling against anything until now and it's too late for that. Now I talked about a disadvantage of my little wiggle positioning cast. Look, my rod tips beyond the anchor. So a solution is to let the anchor travel downstream until it passes the rod tip and then we can come up the spiral staircase, create our big D loop and into our forward delivery. We've got that central piece, centripetal force. There's our letter T. Let it drift down, let it drift down. Now we can come in between it and create our forward delivery. There's, a, there's an advantage to that because we're using centripetal force, but there's a disadvantage. Look at that straight anchor, it's nice and straight. We pull against it, lovely. The wiggle set up. If I let it drift down so the rod tip's below, look, it's the current's putting squiggles in it, which I have to pull straight. So it's really sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul with this. I found that the advantages, if you do it properly, outweigh the disadvantages. Or let me say this, the ability to have it in your armory is better than not having it. I was once on a river and I was stood and I wanted to make a 45 degree downstream double spay and I was actually on a rock but just there was a rock and if I did a normal setup my D loop would wrap around this rock so what I did is I pulled out that wiggle setup it bent it around the rock I came into a big D loop and fired out my cast and it got me a salmon for the day. So having these little tricks and tips keeps you fishing in whatever situation. In that situation, I would have had to get off the rock, come round, waded past the pool, past the lie, and start fishing somewhere else and I'd have missed the fish. So 45 degree double spay. Whichever way you choose, try and get them all in your armory. Nice.